point two is on points, lines, and planes. So in geometry, you're going to have a ton of definitions, theorems, postulates, and so on. So you have to keep track of all of those definitions. Geometry is all about proofs, which is going to involve being very precise with our, our words, okay? So there are three what we call undefined terms in geometry. So how do you define things like a point? Like I could call a point a dot, but then what's a dot? Does this make sense? So we have to start with these three words. So these are our three main words in geometry. So a point is just a dot that's somewhere in space. It has no dimension. There's no size to it. We don't say that it's like three feet wide by three feet tall. Right? We don't say any of that. There's no dimension to it. Um, and it's usually represented by a capital letter and a dot on the page. So think of it as an infinitely small place or position on the map. So here's what a point looks like. Like that. That would be point A. So whenever we refer to A, we just write a capital letter A in the sentence. Okay, a line is a whole bunch of points all together. Now, if some of you guys are in art class, you guys might have a, defi a different definition for a line. You might be like, oh, this is a line in art class. Do you think that's what a line in geometry is going to be? No. No. So it's going to be a straight line. So we're going to have an unlimited number of points along the same straight path. So this would be a line, and we usually put arrows on the end to indicate that it goes off forever. And we can name it a couple different ways. So if I had like points x, y there, I could name it as x, y with the little line over it, so the line with the arrows over it. But there could be, you know, I could call it y, x going the opposite direction. There could be another point in between it, and I could say, oh, this is going to be X, A with the line over it. So there's lots of ways I can name that same line. And the last way that we name lines is sometimes you're going to see like a italicized or maybe a cursive letter uh, next to it, like maybe an L. That would be line L. So these are the different ways that we can name that same line. So we could do X, A with a line over it, a little cursive or, or italic, italicized L, which is hard to do when handwriting. Um, so we can have lots of ways to do that. All right, so a plane. Do you guys know what a plane is? I mean, not an airplane, but a plane. So a plane is a flat surface that extends indefinitely in all directions. So we usually draw it so it looks like a parallelogram. And then we usually have some kind of capital letter in the corner, like an M. That would be plane M. Okay, however, the plane is not limited by the parallelogram, it extends in all directions. So a plane is like if I took this piece of paper and I went all the way out, all the way this way, to the right, all the way to the left, all the way, does that make sense? In all directions. Okay, so it's just a flat surface. It goes on forever like a line goes on forever. Does that make sense? Okay, so the words collinear and coplanar, if you think about the, the stem co in English, right, like co-worker, Right? It means that you, you share a job, right? So co means share. So collinear points and coplanar points are points that are on the same line and points that are on the same plane. So it says, use the diagram on the right to answer the following questions. Name four points that are coplanar. So four points that are on the same plane. So we have our plane. It's plane Q. It's a little cursive Q there in the corner. Do you see it? So four points that are coplanar. We could have like W, X, Y, Z, U would be coplanar, right? All of those would be on the same plane. What about point Q? There is no point Q, right? It was plane Q. Does that make sense? Okay, so four points that are not coplanar. So I could have my X, U, and maybe Y. Those are on the same plane, but I would just need a fourth point that is not on the same plane. So like T would not work. How many points do we have? So if I had three points, would they be on the same plane? Could I have any three points in this classroom? Let's think. What if I have the point up there in the upper left corner, up there, in the corner of the classroom? What if I have a point on the bottom? And then I do a point over above Mrs. Hogan's desk in the corner. Would those three points have a single plane that goes through them? They would. Can you guys visualize the plane in the room? It would be like putting a wall in this classroom that goes diagonally. That would be the plane that goes through all the three of those points. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so what I was just saying is if I had like a room, and if I had one here, here, and here, would there be a plane that goes through them? Sure, it'd be right there. Okay, does that make sense? What if I have four points? So what if I had that point, that point, and this point? Do I have a plane that goes through those four points? No, I have a plane that goes through three of them up here. But do I have a, point, a plane that goes through all four? No. So if you have any three points, there's going to be a plane that will go through those three points. Okay, but once you get to four points, five points, six points, there doesn't have to be a plane that goes through them. Does that make sense? Okay, someone has their music on. Can you guys turn off your music if you have music? All right, so number, letter C. So it says name three points that are collinear. So share a line. So anybody have three points that are collinear? Uh, v, U, and T. Yep, so V, U, and T. Ian, do you have another one? U, X, and mm, not collinear. Those would not be collinear. So U, X, and Z would be collinear. They share a line. Yep, so then if I said not collinear, it would be like U, X, Y. Those would not be collinear. Does that make sense? So are U, Z, and T coplanar? So U, Z, and T, are they coplanar? What did I just say? Through any three points, there is at least one plane, right? So yes. Are Y, Z, and T coplanar? So Y, Z, and T. Yeah, there's only three points, right? Yes. So we, why? Because through any three points, there is a plane, at least one plane. You could actually, we can say at least one plane because sometimes those three lines or those three points are on the same line. And in that case, there's an infinite number of planes. Think of it as like the spine of a book. Do you guys see how there would be an infinite number of points through that point, those three points? It's kind of tricky. You don't have to draw all these things. I know some of you guys are not the best artists. <laughs> it's always a struggle with geometry sometimes when people are not good artists, but that's okay. All right, so a line segment. So we talked about a line, and we said a line had those arrows on the end that went all the way in each direction. A segment stops. So a line segment is going to be one that has, like, endpoints on the end of it like A, B, and we would write a line segment with like just a little piece of a line above it, so no arrows on it. I don't know why, but when I was in school, I always did A, B, and then I did these little like endpoints on it, and that's very super cute, but it took a really long time to do that, so don't draw like little dots on the end of it, just draw like a little straight line above it. So it's represented by something like A, B with the line over Okay, so a portion of a line that has one endpoint called the initial point. So I could have something like this, like BC. That would be ray BC, and we would write it like that. But I could also have rays that start on the other side. Okay, and the thing that's special about this is I'm never going to write it like a... Uh, I wouldn't write it like this with the line going to the left. Rays, we always have the line going to the right. Okay, so how would I write this ray? It would be ray what? Which one do I start with? And I'm going to go like that. Ax, right. So I do not write it like, like this or anything. Okay, so always start with that initial point. Okay, so opposite rays. So the definition says rays that have the same endpoint and go off in opposite directions. So if we have the same end point, or maybe I should say initial point, and they go off in opposite directions. So if I had A here and this was like B and this was X, these two, the one I'm drawing in red is a ray, the one I'm drawing in blue is a ray, together they form a line. That's what opposite rays are. So in this drawing it's AX, and AB are opposite rays. Okay, does that make sense with all these pictures? Okay, so the next one, so I'm drawing 101. <laughs> Draw the three collinear points A, B, and C. 
draw a, a point D that is not collinear with A, B, and C. So we're going to draw three points that share a, share a line, right? Collinear means share a line. Girls, do you need some notes? I think I have extra ones. So draw three, three points that are on a line. Oh, I guess I don't need to draw a line in, but draw three points that are on the same line. So A, B, and C, they're all lined up. And draw point D that is not collinear. So point D can't be on that same line. Let's say we put D up here. So it says draw in A, B, the line segment, and A, D, the ray. So if I'm drawing A, D, the ray, I start with A and I go through D. Mine looks like it curved a little bit. So that would be A, D, the ray. Does that make sense? So you could have lots of different pictures there. Your A, B, and C could be vertical. I don't know how you drew your A, B, C originally. So it says, name two pairs of opposite rays in the picture. Where do the lines intersect? So who can give me one of the pairs of opposite rays? So Keegan? LP and LM. Okay, where do they intersect? Uh-huh. Okay, so that's the first one. And Maya, do you have the second one? So QL, so let's say it another way, actually. So let's do not QL, let's do LQ, right? Because L is the initial point. So we're going to go this way, and then we're going to go this way. Okay, good. And where, they, where do they intersect as well? Yep, perfect. All right. So draw a line and a plane that do not inter intersect. So let's start with the plane. Okay, so there's my plane. And I want a line that's not going to intersect it. So remember, lines and planes go off infinitely in all directions. So if I have a line that's kind of slanty like this, if this is extended, it's eventually going to cross that. Do we ag agree? How is the only way that I can draw that line? Uh, anybody besides Keegan? Keegan's on it. He likes this geometry stuff. Joseph, how about you? How can I draw this line? Think about your piece of paper and like a pencil. So if I have my pencil, oh, that's going to intersect somewhere, right? Even if it's over here, this extends forever, it's going to intersect. So how's the only way I can hold the pencil? Like this, parallel. Perfect. So you're going to you're going to draw it parallel to the plane. All right, and then draw two planes that do not intersect in a line that intersects each plane at one point. So if planes are not going to intersect, they also have to be parallel. So imagine you have your two pieces of paper hanging out in space. They're just parallel to each other, like this. And then a line that intersects each one in a single point. Oh, man. So we're coming down. We're going to go through that. So the way we draw things through is sometimes we do like a dotted line. You could do a dotted line behind and then a dotted line. So it looks something like that. Or you could just leave off the dotted lines if you want to. I don't care. And it can just kind of go behind. Three-dimensional. Uh, yeah. When I taught at IU, I taught a class that was um, like geometry for elementary ed majors. And I had a girl that was just, she was not a very good artist. <laughs> and I kept drawing things. And she was like, no, I can't. I just can't. And I would looked at looked at her picture. And I was like, okay, you cannot. Like this is this is something that you're not able to do. I get it. So, so if you can't draw, it's fine. I'm not going to ask you to draw this on the test or anything. All right. So decide if the following points are collinear. So negative two comma seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We all remember how to graph points, right? One comma five. Negative 8, comma, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3. Are they collinear? No, they're not. Okay, so where would that 8 have to be if it was going to be collinear? Negative 8, comma, would be collinear. 
caps. Let's put on our thinking caps. Let's think back to algebra one. We had this thing that was called slope. How can we use slope to figure out where this point is? Well, this one went over three up two, right? Could I continue going over three up two, over three up two? What's that point up there? Yeah, you went up to one, two, three times from seven. Ooh, not 11 then. I think it's 13. Is it 13? Oh, wait, hang on. From, from seven. Oh, from not from seven, from five. Yeah, it is 11. You're right. So we go up. So from this height of five, we went up to, up to, up to, right? So it should be at 11, right? So you guys can kind of think about what would have to be collinear. All right, and the last thing we're going to talk about are postulates and axioms. So I told you in geometry we're going to be doing a lot of things called proofs. I don't know if some of your friends have told you about proofs in geometry. Usually people don't like proofs in geometry, but you're going to like them. We're going to get you so you like them. All right, with proofs, we're going to talk about things called theorems, postulates, axioms. Okay, so postulates and axioms are things that are pretty darn obvious. They do not need a proof associated with them. So that's what it says. So it's an, an accepted statement of fact. Postulates and axioms do not need a proof. Like the undefined terms, they are just the basic building blocks of geometry. They're things that we kind of just get, right? So one of them that we'll eventually do is called the segment addition postulate. All of you guys will get it. It, will, it basically says if I have a two inch segment and I add it to a five inch segment, how long is this whole segment? It's seven, right? Only we use math terms and instead of calling it two and five, we call it AB and BC. AB added to BC will give us a total length of A to C. Does that make sense? That's the segment addition postulate. So a postulate is something that's like so basic, you're like, oh duh, that's, of course that's true. So the first postulate that you learn is through any two points, there is exactly one line. Do we agree? Any two points that I draw, can I draw a single line through them? Yeah, that's true. The next one says, if two distinct lines intersect, they intersect in exactly one point. Does that make sense? They're not going to inter intersect in two points, are they? Because our lines don't curve back around. We don't have curvy lines. Right, we have straight lines. So if I have two straight lines, they have to intersect in a single point. If two distinct lines intersect, or if two distinct planes intersect, they intersect in exactly one line. This is like the corner of the classroom. So if you look at the left side over there and you look at the front wall, the left wall and the front wall intersect in a single line. Do you see the single line? It's like the edge of the classroom, right? Um, through any three non-collinear points, there's exactly one plane. We talked about that earlier. So any three points that I pick in this classroom, we could take like a piece of paper and imagine that we've extended it infinitely in all directions. Uh, it would have exactly one plane that goes through it. Does that make sense? Okay, good. I think that's the end of the section, right? Anything else? Yeah, that's it.